Hey everybody, my recent video about Assetto Corsa Evo's throttle model got a few views, which is nice. I don't care too much about my channel, it's not monetized and I'm insanely popular as is. However, the more people see it, maybe it increases the chance that Kunos will improve the situation for final release. I quite enjoy playing Assetto Corsa and it's been out for 10 years, so maybe Evo will be the sim for the next 10 years and I would quite like my next 10 years of casual sim racing to be done with a slightly better throttle model, so let's hope they get round to improving it. Despite there being a link in the description of the original video to a more in-depth explanation, there were still quite a few questions asked and people uh, were wondering what the importance was. I was just using a tiny bit of throttle in neutral, the revs rise slowly, why is that bad? I will talk about two examples, one is driving away from standstill and one is driving a car at the limit, whether it's a race car, a road car, it doesn't matter and why the model that is used in a Santa Corsa Evo isn't suitable to both of these. I am almost sure at some point in your life you've seen a torque curve. So we have RPM on the horizontal axis and torque on the vertical axis. So you can look at what RPM, at full throttle, this RPM, here we have fairly constant torque from the engine. At some point the VTEC probably here kicks in and as revs rise the torque goes up, stays constant and then near the rev limiter it drops away again. Why did I do my test in the original video at 13% throttle and we heard the revs rise really slowly? So this is not that complicated to understand. Imagine there is torque on a wheel, for example. It will spin up, the revs will increase. So how fast the revs rise is effectively how much torque there is on it. If the revs rise really slowly, there's an itty bitty little bit of torque. And if the revs rise fast, there is more torque. Now, let me explain that by drawing the curve that we heard in the previous video. So simply by air, you can make this red curve that is drawn here, which is what we heard in the video where I did 13% throttle. Initially, the revs came on somewhat quick. Then for a long time, the revs barely increased. That means only a little bit of torque. And then the revs rise faster again, which means there's more torque. So this is roughly the torque curve that we had on the engine at 13% throttle. What might a torque curve of an S2000 or a normal car actually look like at 13% throttle? Well, it's hard to tell, but it might be something like this. Very, very different. First example, driving away from standstill. In a manual car, you give it a little bit of throttle. The revs stabilize pretty fast at, say, 3000 RPM there. And then you release the clutch a little bit. You feel the bite point. Car starts to move. The revs drop a bit. You add a bit of throttle maybe. Release the clutch a bit further and off you go. First, finding a steady RPM, the green model. We add some throttle, 13% in this case. There is quite a lot of torque, so the revs will rise pretty quickly, pretty quickly, less quickly, less quickly, and here there is zero torque. Let's say this is 3000 RPM. That means there is quite a bit of torque. We will quickly reach the first 2000 RPM, but even the last 1000 RPM comes on fairly quickly and the engine stops accelerating it's stable at 3000 rpm and that's quite easy to find you have to tweak the pedal a little bit you have to get used to it for five minutes on each new car sure quite easy though to find a steady 3000 rpm in a car ac evo on the other hand we give it a bit of throttle and we have two problems first of all there is less torque here that means it will take longer for the engine to reach the rpm and you see it never stabilizes there is always torque the torque never reaches zero so we cannot find a stable RPM point, it will tend to accelerate a bit further, or if we let go of the throttle it will drop below. It's very hard to find 3000 RPM and it will take longer to get there. So the first part, quickly reaching a steady RPM is difficult with AC Evo, and easier with a better model. Let's say we found a steady 3000 RPM here. Now we release the clutch just a little bit. The clutch transmits torque from the engine to the driven wheels and luckily we already have torque here, so let's visualize that. When you fully release the pedal, the clutch is capable of transmitting all the torque from the engine to the wheels. So let's say fully released pedal, we have this much torque that is being transmitted. When we press the pedal to the floor, the clutch pedal, we have zero torque being transmitted. So we release the clutch. A little bit let's say this amount we've before that just reached a steady 3000 rpm but now we're saying hey i want to move this car i want you to transmit this torque to the driven wheels with the green model the engine says well 
I don't have any torque, so I cannot resist this. The car weighs something, I cannot move it for free, I need torque to move it. I don't have it, so the revs will drop. As the revs drop, you see we go up this green line. So the revs drop, but the torque is increasing until this RPM right here, where we've met equilibrium and we can now slowly start to move this car. We did not add throttle. The, the engine naturally gained torque simply by losing some RPM. With the AC Evo throttle model, we couldn't really find a steady RPM. That was difficult, but we have almost no torque here. We release the clutch. We now want this height of torque and we just follow the curve and we arrive here and we might slowly drive away. But this is an extremely low RPM. You will feel the engine might stall at this point and you will be inclined to add a lot of throttle to bring the RPM back. Now let's release the clutch further and we are here. We can see that with the better throttle model, the revs will drop significantly, but the engine will still gain torque. And it is quite likely that the car by this point has enough torque to start moving and it might all just work out. With AZFO though, we've stalled because there simply is no torque and we will have stalled the engine. Next phase, you tend to add a little bit of throttle as you release the clutch. Adding that little bit of throttle in AZFO just sort of shifts the curve upwards mostly. And in a better model, you see it sort of offsets it to the right almost more than up. Maybe now we want to transmit half the torque with a bit of added throttle. Well, we kind of are at two and a half thousand RPM. And we've just successfully driven off. With the AC Evo model, releasing the clutch further and adding some throttle was no way enough. We do not have enough torque and the engine will still stall. There is an incredible tendency and requirement in AC Evo to give it a huge amount of throttle. And when I say AC Evo, I mean a whole bunch of simulators because it is extremely common for sims to use this. So I'm not even singling out AC Evo. It's just a general bad thing about many sims. You tend to add a lot of throttle. This is the torque curve that we need to just drive away at this RPM. Remember, we had 13% throttle with the green model. We let go of the clutch. Then we let go some more and we added some throttle. Maybe this is 20% throttle and we are now driving away smoothly. In AC Evo and other sims, we had 13% throttle, did nothing. We wanted to stall, added some throttle, still did nothing, wanted to stall. Now we have to add 60% throttle just to raise this red line to the point where we have enough torque to meet the clutch demand. You might say, okay, then you drive away smoothly. Well, probably not. Give it a bit too much throttle or release the clutch a bit too slowly and zzz, the ref suddenly rise because there is torque all the way to the red line here. It is very hard to have a nice sort of not insane amount of revs when driving away. If we release the clutch with the green model a bit slowly or add throttle a bit fast, you see these curves are sloping down. We cannot reach an insane RPM and the more RPM we get, the less torque we have. So the engine will not rev up as fast anymore. So driving away with controlled RPM is extremely difficult with the AC Evo model and all the other sims. Don't forget, it's not just AC Evo and a lot more natural with a better model like the green one. Final example. There is now a brown line that represents the tire grip that we have and a vertical line here representing fairly low RPM. Let's say we are exiting a hairpin. We are adding the throttle from this RPM and we do not want to go too far above the grip of the tires. Otherwise we'll have too much wheel spin and it will be trouble. First AC Evo. We've applied just a bit too much throttle and that means there is more torque going to the wheels than they have grip. So the wheels will spin up and they are connected to the engine. So the revs will also go up. So we move to the right. As we move to the right, we still deliver more torque than the tires can handle. So the wheel spin will still increase. We move to the right because the wheel spin increases connected to the engine, engine revs go up. As we go right, we get a bit more torque. So if we don't touch the throttle, we just keep it at a constant position here. This will be about 70, 80% throttle. Then the torque keeps rising. We do nothing with the pedal. And as the revs rise, the torque keeps increasing and the wheel spin gets worse and worse because we have more torque than the wheels can handle. They will spin up faster and faster. So now with the green better model, 
we apply a bit too much throttle actually, so we deliver more torque than the tires can handle. Tires and the engine will spin up, we move to the right. Still more torque than the tires have, so more revs, because we spin up the tires, the engine revs rise. Here it gets pretty close, because the engine revs still rise, but as the revs rise, instead of the AC Evo model where the torque increases, our torque goes down. So at some point, yes the revs have risen quite a bit, but as they rise the torque drops, and now we have that beautiful situation at this RPM, the torque that we deliver to the tires is equal to the torque that they have grip wise. So the wheel spin, if we do nothing, stops here. And in AC Evo, the wheel spin never stops because if we keep the throttle at the same position, there will be more torque going to the wheels than they can handle all the way to the red line. So why is that so bad in AC Evo and in quite a lot of other sims that use the same model? Let's say you found the perfect throttle at this RPM out of corner exit, the, the torque that you deliver to the tires is exactly equal to the grip they have, no wheel spin, perfect maximum grip exit. Amazing! At some point you will reach a higher RPM and now you see the curve will rise, so you will get more wheel spin. In order to avoid wheel spin, as you reach more revs, you have to let go of the throttle. So now we've let go of the throttle 5 or 10% and now at this RPM here it's perfect. But we are accelerating, the revs rise, so you have to let go of the throttle a bit more. And then the revs rise again, and then you get wheel spin again. So you have to lower the throttle a bit more. So as you get into the VTEC on a low grip surface in this Honda S2000 for example that I used, you have to take throttle away as the revs rise, which is very unnatural and not how it should be. That is quite illogical. It's been common in sims since the dawn of the century and that is actually literal, literally true. So with the better model, what would happen? This is a bit rough, but I think I can explain it anyway. Initially, at this RPM, corner exit, the torque that we deliver, the green line, is equal to the grip of the tires. Excellent, but as the revs rise, at some point we deliver less torque, the green line goes below the grip of the tires. When it does that, around here, we want to add a bit of throttle. What does it do to the curve? It sort of moves it a bit like that. See, and now we have the crossover point here. And then we reach this RPM, oh, we are below the grip of the tires, so we constantly feed in the throttle, and this curve moves like that. So we always have to add throttle as the revs rise in order to meet the grip of the tires. At no point, almost unlikely anyway, do we have to let go of the throttle. So this is a far more natural, logical, and almost certainly more realistic way for throttle models to work. So I hope this was interesting to you, because it is not a small thing, it is quite fundamental. Plus, unlike a tire model, which is incredibly complicated, and most people who work in the tire industry do not even know how tires work, and I certainly don't, this is relatively simple and doable and data enough data exists for you to make a better model than the one in AC Evo. Once again though, I want to say it's not AC Evo only, it's AC, it's R Factor 1, it's Live for Speed, it's Race 07, uh, it's iRacing. A huge amount of sims use the bad model. I hope I've explained now with some examples how bad it is and that you should demand better from a modern simulator in 2025. Hope it was interesting. If you have any questions, do post them below. I might try to answer them. Thanks for watching. All right. Cheers.